If you've watched my other videos, you've seen me talk about soldering SMDs using basic equipment. And when I talked about basic equipment, I meant a something like a 1.6 millimeter chisel tip, which is what I always use and which you can get for basically any soldering iron. And the irons that I've used in my videos were this one, which is a um, Hakko FM 2027 with a 1.6 millimeter chisel tip in it. So it's got a chisel tip. And this one, which is the same handle, but with a two millimeter cup, a bevel cup. And I use that one for soldering the uh, QFPs. So when I was talking about basic equipment, I was talking about this tip. And a legitimate criticism of this would be that it's a thousand dollars worth of soldering equipment. So while the tip is basic, the station and the equipment is not. And that's a legitimate criticism. The other iron that I have on my desk is this one, uh, which is a Weller uh, PES uh, 51. I think that's what it is, PES 51. Uh, 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 yeah, PES 51. So again, this is a 1.6 millimeter chisel tip, very similar to the, the one on the Hakko. And this is a much more basic soldering station, um, but it's a Weller WES D51, and it's $150 worth of soldering station. And again, you could argue this isn't truly basic equipment. And again, that would be a legitimate criticism. So I went to Walmart and I bought this. And it is a, uh, what's called here, WorkPro CA310, which if you look at the label on here, it's actually a um, Hangzhou Great Star Industries um, part number, where is it there? I can't see the part number. Oh, there it is. Uh, GS. 30W. So you can search for GS30W and find a whole bunch of soldering irons that appear to be essentially the same thing. Different handle styles, you know, some of them have the soft padding up here. They're different colors. There's red ones and black ones and blue ones. But they all seem to be the same basic guts. And so what I thought I would do is make another video or another two or three videos of me trying to do what you've seen me do with these guys with this. And to show you either that it is possible to do the fine SMD soldering that I'm doing with the more expensive equipment with this, or to discover with you that you cannot actually do it. And I think we're going to be able to make it work. But let's see. So I'm going to open this. I haven't even opened it. Um, this was fifteen, $15.88 I paid for this. And it's funny because um, I, didn't, I didn't notice that there was solder included. And this here, 14G rosin cord with a D on it solder. This is actually rosin core solder. It has a core of rosin. At least I think that it does. It claims that it does. We'll check and see. Um, but, you know, the, the spelling is even bad on the package. So let's open this up here. And if you looked at my, uh, my pinned post at the top of the community, you'll see that I recommend having a, uh, a scalpel and a handle and blade. And this is why just so that you can get this open. So this actually is very similar to one that I had when I was a kid. Um, the barrel here, on a lot of the really cheap soldering irons, the barrel is actually a rolled piece of steel and it has a seam down it. And this isn't, this is a solid tube. And it's got a couple of screws at the end that hold the tip in. So it's, I mean, it doesn't look bad. You know, for a basic soldering iron. Let's get the solder out of here. So there, we get the solder out. It's actually pretty decent diameter. I like a thin solder. It doesn't look like 
a, a tin lead solder to me. It looks like it's probably a um, a lead free solder. And I've, what I've done is I've just cut the end of the solder off so that I can see. And I can actually see. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it or not, but there is a rosin core in the in the middle of there. So. Let's see how long it takes for this thing to come up to temperature. And I've already heated up a couple of times. I've actually recorded this a couple of times, but my camera keeps switching off, so I'm going to use my phone now. I think the phone's going to give us better sound anyway. So I'm going to plug this in, and it's cold-ish. So I'm plugging it in. Let's see, I can hang on to it. At this point, my hand would be sizzling if I was holding on to the hackle, but I'm still holding directly on to the iron. You see my other hand hasn't left my arm. Starting to get uncomfortably warm now. <clears throat> so I've got the solder. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got the solder. I've got the iron heating up. Let's see how long this takes. Given that I've done this three times, I know how long this takes, but I think you're going to be shocked by how long this takes. Let's get the hacko down here so that we can use it as an example. Hacko's cold. So the Walmart special is still heating up here. That tip's looking a little bit loose, isn't it? This is the problem with these cheap irons, is that when you heat them up, everything changes shape. Oh, that's as tight as it can go. That's the one that holds that one in. Let's tighten this one up. There. So you can see it's still heating up. And as I was saying, this is the problem with these irons, is that those screws heat and cool as the iron heat and cools, and they tend to work themselves loose a little bit. You can see that tip's a little bit tighter now. When the tip is loose, it's not going to make particularly good thermal contact. And it is actually a little bit loose in that barrel, which means that it's not making good contact anyway. But it really does take a very long time to heat up. Once I get it up to temperature here, I'm actually not going to unplug it. I'll set up for the next shot, which is to actually do a little bit of soldering and show you what that's like without cooling it down because... I don't want to wait for it to heat up again. Oh, it's coming. Here it comes. It's gonna, gonna melt. You can see it starting to shimmer there on the tip. There it goes. All right, so it's, it's melting the solder now. All right, so that's, I don't know how long that took. That took a long time. All right, let's heat up the hacko. So the hacko is cold, right, completely cold. When I turn it on, the red light's going to come on down here. It's going to take a minute for the station to start up a few seconds, and then it'll start heating. And when you hear the beep is when it hits temperature. And it's going to melt the solder before it hits temperature. But it's going up to 400 degrees C. So watch the band when I switch it on. So it's heating now. And listen for the beep and watch the solder. So it's heating now. The solder is melting. And it's done. So it's now at 400 degrees ready to heat. Or, sorry, ready to solder. So this one, I don't know, what did that take? A minute? This one, seven or eight, maybe ten seconds. And I'm ready to solder. So that's one other thing about the, the professional gear is that it heats up very quickly and is ready to go. So I'm going to hang this up, turn it off. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up to actually do a bit of soldering with this iron and see how it works.